This is a pissed off rookie, Sidney Crosby. Actually, this is probably the exact moment where he got the nickname Crybaby Crosby from Philadelphia fans. And while they might be loving it in this moment, they were about to find out what happens when you bully the next great hockey prodigy. Let's go all the way back to 2005. Fresh off a lockout from our boy Gary Bettman, and the Pittsburgh Penguins were the lucky team to win the draft lottery and select hockey's next generational talent. With a Penguins team that had already survived two bankruptcies in 20 years, they were on the verge of relocation. That was until they got Sidney Crosby. So asking an 18 year old kid to save a franchise is a lot of pressure, but in the 19 games leading up to this one, Crosby was a little over a point per game and living up to the hype. But on November 16th, 2005, the Battle of Pennsylvania would be completely renewed. Now, as a generational superstar in the NHL, part of the job comes with being targeted. This isn't anything new as we see it in today's NHL, but not to the same degree as we did in 2005. When Crosby entered the league, it was the first year after the lockout and the game was transitioning to a new era emphasized on speed and skill. This was evident by some of the rule changes with making the offensive zone a little bit bigger and the neutral zone a little bit smaller. That being said, hockey in 2005 was still drastically different than it was today. There were still monsters in the game who weren't going to let an 18 year old come in and dominate without paying a price. Enter Darian Hatcher, a 6'5", 225 pound monster who was in the last few years of his career but was still a damn good defenseman and an absolute menace to play against physically. You know all those absurd open ice hits in the early 2000s that made Scott Stevens the most feared man in hockey? Yeah, well, right along with him was Darian Hatcher, who had his fair share of blowing up people when he had the chance. So when a rookie Sidney Crosby would go one-on-one -on -one with a veteran Darian Hatcher in the Battle of Pennsylvania, someone was bound to send a message. That looked clean enough for 2005, right? I mean, Sidney Crosby is the new generational superstar and the refs are just simply making sure that Crosby knows that this is how the game is going to be played. As Crosby goes to drive wide, Hatcher doesn't puck watch and plays the body perfectly against Sid. That's a clean textbook play, but of course at the end, Hatcher gives him the classic forearm shiver to just drop Crosby to the ground. Sid loses two teeth, milks it a tiny bit, and then proceeds to tell Hatcher that he's a f joke while slamming his helmet in frustration. Of course, the Philly crowd absolutely loved it. And this moment was the birth of what was known as Crybaby Crosby. These little cheap shots to try and bully Crosby would continue throughout the game too. As afterwards, Crosby was high sticked by Hatcher again with no call on the play. Absolutely furious by the non-calls, Crosby would of course complain to the officials and then pick up an unsportsmanlike conduct for complaining. Philly wanted to bully Crosby, get in his face and throw him off his game. And judging by his reaction, it was working. But they just still couldn't keep Crosby off the scoreboard. With one goal and one assist heading into OT, the Flyers didn't realize that this was the look of someone who was going to spend the next 18 years of his career tormenting a franchise. And so with a pissed off Sidney Crosby looking to show the NHL what happens when you try and intimidate him, he would get the ultimate revenge on the Flyers. And here's Crosby on a breakaway. The game on his stick. Score! Sidney Crosby in overtime and the Penguins have won the game 3-2. And so this moment sent a message to the NHL. First, of course, that you can get under Sidney Crosby's skin. It's possible. He won't have a lot of protection and it could get him off his game. But it also told the league that despite being a generational superstar, he would not be intimidated. As the years went on, Crosby was never not targeted. Some of his antics made it easy for the league to want to give him a cheap shot, but it got to the point where his career was almost cut short with concussions. Now, this always led to the argument that the league or the Penguins didn't do a great job at protecting Crosby, and as a result, he usually had to fight his own battles. But even with all the extra attention, Crosby wasn't a superstar who was going to shy away from conflict and let it impact his game. These are honestly similar qualities that can be seen in the next great superstar, with Connor Bedard. As an NHL superstar, if you don't stand up for yourself, teams will take advantage, but 
It is a fine line between staying disciplined and letting emotions take over. If you get too riled up, it can derail your entire game. Don't push back at all, and teams take notice and target you even more. In this game, a rookie Sidney Crosby did what he does best, and he got his revenge by helping his team win. Since that exact moment, Sidney Crosby has completely owned the Philadelphia Flyers. 83 career games, 124 career points, and three playoff series victories. With all the greatness in his career, there's absolutely no one that Sidney Crosby loves playing more than the Philadelphia Flyers. So, always a hot debate on how superstars should handle these types of situations. How do you think they should react? Do you think they should skate away, trip the opponent, look for a power play, complain to the refs, give it right back to them? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And as always, if you want to see more hockey breakdowns in the summer, just click on any of the links right here.